and we are on air. Hi guys, my name is Brianna and today I'm going to be telling you 19 things I learned in 19 years. So let's get right into the video. So today is my 19th birthday and I've been doing this series since I was 16 where every single year on my birthday I say blank things I learned in blank years based on my age. And I got this idea from Alexis G. Zoll, so this whole series stemmed from her and I loved her idea to do this series so I decided I should do it as well. So I've been doing it every single year. And and so here we are. It's so strange to think that I'm 19 now. The years just keep ticking by and every year it feels stranger and stranger that that's my age. Like it just sounds like not correct. <laughs> like I don't know, I don't feel 19, but oh well. <laughs> I guess I will get used to it as the year goes through. So now I have my list of things I learned this year, life lessons and whatnot. Not all this year, they're just anything that wasn't included in a previous video of this series that throughout my life life but mostly this past year, things I learned. And they're not in any particular order, so I'm just gonna be going through randomly, but I did make a list, so I'm not just going winging it. I'm not just going into this blind I have a list. And then obviously, I'll elaborate a little on each thing. Number one, no matter how long or how well you know someone, you can never predict them. You can think 100% that you know how someone's going to react to a certain situation or behave in a certain situation. You can always be wrong. People are unpredictable and are constantly changing. And no matter how much faith you have in them, they could go the opposite way. So you really have no idea. And that can suck sometimes or it can be great and people can surprise you in amazing ways. It's not always bad, but it's just you never know as much as you think you know. Number two, nonconformity is intrinsically valuable. Now, this is something that I didn't necessarily learn. I was told and I just ended up actually agreeing. So, so I took a class last semester, a literature class, and before school switched to online, I liked this teacher a lot. He ended up being a bit wacko on online school, but um, I actually really did enjoy his in-person classes. He made me think a lot and we had very intellectual conversations as a class. But one of the things we did one day is he made a list of facts that were about these two stories we were reading, but at the end he revealed that he actually believes that these are facts about just life in general as well. And he made us debate what makes these true and acted as if he believed they were false to get us to really think about them. So we got to like argue with them in class even though he agreed with us all along that these were all true. And for me, the reason I think that this particular point stood out to me is because doing something that's different from what everyone else is doing brings uniqueness into the world and it's what makes all of us special. So yeah, I think that being a non-conformist in any way, shape, or form, and everyone is in some part of their life. That's what's valuable about each of us. So, of course, nonconformity is intrinsically valuable if that's what makes us all valuable. When we conform to what everyone else is doing, there's no value in that. Nonconformity is not only intrinsically valuable, but the only valuable things. That's just my opinion, but I really truly believe that. Number three, your childhood expectations of growing up are not accurate, so you shouldn't be upset that you're not living up to them. As kids, we have these such high expectations of when I'm this years old, I will have accomplished this, this, and this. When I'm this years old, I'll be at this point in my life. But we don't know what's actually gonna happen when we get to those points in our life. And we don't know if it'll be difficult or easy or whatever. Most things in life are not easy. So when we're a kid, it seems so easy and so obvious, like, yeah, well, let's just do it. So you shouldn't put it on yourself as a burden that, well, I'm not living up to what I said I should when I was in elementary school. You know, you don't know what it's gonna be like, and that's an unfair burden. Number four, how much you choose to share of your own personal beliefs is your choice and no one should pressure you and you shouldn't feel pressured to just give in. There's so much going on in the world and obviously certain things, there's no debating it, otherwise you just don't have human decency, like equality, for example. But you should never be forced to speak out on a topic, otherwise it's truly not genuine anymore. I personally believe that people who have large followings, it's one of the most important things they can do with their followings is to speak out on these important topics. But someone choosing to stay out of it, at least staying out of it in the public eye, is their choice and no one should be put down for that or pestered or pressured to do something that they don't want to do. And the other thing is just because someone's not doing something public, 
publicly doesn't mean they're not doing their part privately. Like, I know for me personally, with a lot of the things that were going on in the world, I had my own personal opinions that matched with a lot of these people were saying publicly. I just chose to keep myself out of the situation publicly. And that doesn't just go for politics and things like that. It can go for anything. I feel like people are often so much so pressured to stay their beliefs with anything going on, whether even in their personal lives and things like that, or in the world, or literally anything. People are always being pressured to share and share and share, but it's their own choice, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's valuable for them to speak up, but I don't think that keeping to themselves is bad, necessarily. Number five, commitment is more important than love in a relationship. Again, that's just my personal opinion, and I do think, obviously, love is a very important thing in a relationship, but I just think that commitment is more important. Because if you have love but you don't have commitment, you have nothing. I think you have to choose to keep loving someone and choose to keep being with someone when things get hard. Because emotions are chemical and they can easily fall away and break the second things get difficult and your brain associates some sort of negativity with that. But it's a choice to keep pushing through. And that's not just in significant other, that's in any relationship in your life. Whether that's a friend, a family member, someone you look up to, you commit to stick with that relationship even when things get hard, even when the love is wavering. And obviously there is unconditional love, but you don't unconditionally love every single person in your life. That would be absurd. But the important thing is choosing to stay committed when that love is wavering. And that commitment is what's going to bring back the love every time. And that's just my opinion. Six, there's so many different types of love and love is such an abstract concept. This seems like an obvious idea, but I feel like so many people get set in the idea of, oh, am I in love? Am I in love? Do I love this person? Do I love this person? I love you. I love you. But love means something different to everyone, and there's so many different types of love that when it comes down to it, we can love everyone or love no one, depending on just how we view a feeling. You can have immensely strong feelings for someone, but for you, you might not classify it as the word love. So we can't always be comparing love, and you can't compare the way you love one person to the way you love another person. It's always different. If you have two friends and you love both of them in different ways, no love is better or worse. They're just different types of love and they're different types of feeling. We just use the word love as a blanket statement for positive connections and feelings with other people. But in reality, the word love means so many different feelings. You don't feel the same way about your friends as you do your significant other as you do your mom. They're all different feelings and they all mean something different to you, but they're all still love, so we can't compare different things that are labeled as love. Number seven. This one is more so specific towards people who struggle with any form of mental illness, but this is an idea that I struggled with a lot and I feel like lately has been sinking in a lot more. A lot of what you struggle with are symptoms, not personal faults, and you can and will overcome them. I spent so much of my life taking symptoms of my issues, whether it be my anxiety, my depression, depression, depersonalization, anything that I've struggled with, and I've pinned it as, this is my fault, I need to just get over it. But it's not my fault, it's a symptom, and I could get over it and deal with it and overcome it with a lot of time and effort, but it's not my fault that it's there to begin with, and I just have to work on managing it and overcoming it. Number seven. Giving a friendship a chance is worth it, even if it doesn't work out. Friendships don't always work out. And when it doesn't work out, that's not like, oh, I never should have even put in the effort. No, that's ridiculous. Of course you should have put in the effort. It's always worth it to try. And something not working out doesn't mean it wasn't worth it to try. Number nine, don't give too much of yourself if you're getting nothing in return. This is something I've learned lately, but I'm definitely still struggling with. If you grow up in a good environment, you're taught to be selfless and and caring and always be there for people. And you should be all those things. But if you have a relationship with someone and it's always you being there for them, you being there for them, you give, you give, you give, you're obviously not doing that to get something in return. But if they're not there for you in equal parts, that's not a good relationship. Relationships are all about give and take. And sure, you're not being there for your friends for something in return, but you're not friends with them to get nothing out of it. It's a relationship that you should enjoy as well. It shouldn't always be you giving your energy to them. It's all about balance. 
Number 10, labels are only part of your identity if you want them to be. I personally feel really comfortable with labels and I take them in as part of who I am, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Not everything that is a fact about you is part of your identity. You choose who you want to be in life. If you don't want your sexuality to identify you, it doesn't have to. But if you feel comfortable in that label and you want it to be part of who you are, then take that pride and let it be. Same thing goes for mental illness or any other facts about you. You choose what labels are part of your identity and only you choose what your identity is. Number 11. It's never too late to start standing up for yourself. In any context. Just because you've been through a situation so much and so often doesn't mean you have to just deal with it now. If you wake up one day and decide you want to start standing up for yourself, do it. It is never too late. Number 12. More friends doesn't mean you have more people to lean on. Now this kind of goes with what I was saying earlier about needing that balance in a friendship, but so many times we think of like, oh if I had more friends, this and that. But then when you get new friends, sure you could go out and you have good times with them and you could be there for them and all that, but doesn't necessarily mean that you have more people you could go to. More friends isn't always the answer, whereas more so working on the friendships you have is where the answer is. And something else that kind of goes with that, it's never too late to reach out to old friends. So this year, I've reconnected with a lot of people who I've known for a long time, but I've never genuinely been close friends with, but now I am. So I didn't necessarily get more friends, but I do have more more people and more friends in my life actively because I decided to take that step to actually rekindle those relationships and ended up being a really great thing. So it's just something to always be thinking about. Number 13. You don't always have to be someone's priority, but if they don't prioritize you when they should, then there is a problem. People always have a bunch of different priorities at different times in their lives, different days, different things, situations. Priorities are constantly changing. If your friend's family is having a hard time, then their family should be their priority. But then let's say their family is doing well and you're having a hard time, you should be their priority. And that's how it should always work. But if they're not prioritizing you in the moments that count, then there's a problem. You do not by any way, shape, or form ever need to be someone's priority fully always. That's absurd to think of. Priorities are constantly changing. The issue just comes in when they don't prioritize you when it's important. And if they're not prioritizing you, that's when you have to figure out is is this relationship worth it or not? 14. I didn't realize or I didn't think about it isn't an excuse. It's part of the problem. So many times when your feelings get hurt, people say, I'm sorry, I just didn't realize or I didn't think it would upset you or I didn't think of your feelings and it just went over my head. But people don't realize that that's the problem. You didn't stop to consider my feelings. You didn't stop to consider how it would affect me. That's a huge problem in so many relationships because people don't want to take a break to sit there and think, how is this going to affect the people I care about? And if you don't think to think of me, then how do I know you actually care? That's a huge problem, not an excuse. And people always use it as an excuse. If someone tries to use it as an excuse, you have to stand up and say, no, we need to actually talk about this because that's not a valid reason to hurt me. Number 15, reaching out for important events is only important important if the effort sticks year round. If someone reaches out to you every year on your birthday, but they never ask you to hang out, never ask you to be there for them, or never there for you, then that effort is useless. Sure, it is nice and kind to wish someone a happy birthday, but am I gonna value a relationship if that's the only time you speak to me? Value in a relationship doesn't come from remembering important events. It comes from the day-to-day -day relationships, being there for each other, going through things together, having amazing memories together. If you remember to text me, happy birthday, merry Christmas, it takes a little more than that. 16. Your friend's beliefs are not a reflection of your own beliefs. People tend to say that your friend's beliefs are a reflection of your own beliefs, but I strongly disagree with that. There's obviously a line where that is true. Like, obviously, if you're friends with a bunch of racist people, that's 
terrible and you're probably also racist. But if your friends believe in a different political policy than you, that's not bad. You don't have to be not friends with someone because they don't line up with every single thing that you believe. Yes, there are fundamental issues that if your friends don't match your beliefs, you're not going to be friends with people then, you know? If you're very passionate about equality and someone in your friend group doesn't believe in equality, you're not going to be friends with them anymore. That part is true. Yes, the fundamental things about life, you're going to match with your friends. But when it comes to actually specific beliefs, your friends are not a reflection on you whatsoever. And you should be friends with people with varying beliefs so that you guys can all shape each other and learn from each other rather than always being so one-sided all the time. 17. And this one kind of goes with the last one. It is never too late to change your beliefs and that should be normalized. We really, as a society, on social media and the internet in general, bully people for their past. And some things that people say or do, there is no excuse. But just simply having different beliefs than they do now doesn't make someone a bad person. In fact, I think it makes them a great person because it shows that they were able to learn and change their beliefs based on something. They were able to grow as a person and really reflect on themselves and change their ways. I think that should be way more normalized and people should be able to be more open about it. Like, yeah, I agreed with this really messed up thing, but now I see what's wrong about it and I've changed my beliefs. That's an incredible thing to be able to do and we don't recognize that as a society. We just bully people for it but it should be way more normalized and we should be applauding people for having the guts to say I was wrong. Now I'm going to learn. 18. If someone doesn't respect you they don't deserve your respect and that's anyone. I don't care who you are, if you think you deserve for me to respect you, if you don't respect me, I'm not going to respect you. Respect goes both ways. If someone is rude or disrespectful to you, you owe them nothing, point blank, no matter who they are. And now, lastly, number 19. It is never too late to meet new people and make new friends. I know I said earlier that you don't always need more friends, but an issue I had for such a long time is I thought I was stuck with the same people. I had such a hard time making new friends that I thought that it was too late and the people I knew were the people I would always have to deal with. And then I met Elle. She has been an amazing friend since I met her and I'm so grateful to have her. But I never thought that that was possible. I thought I was done. And then I just met someone new and now she's one of my closest friends. It's never too late. You can always make new friends and you can always meet new people and you will if you try to. I think that's one of the biggest lessons I learned this year is that friendships come and go but it's never too late for anything to fix old relationships or to make new ones. There's always hope and friendships is one of the most important things in life. So you always want to put effort into that. So I hope you guys agree with most of what I have to say. This year has been an eventful year. I feel like I've learned a lot this year. It's been a crazy one. I can't believe it's my birthday already. This year has flown by, but also felt like an eternity at the same time. But that's life. Things are constantly changing. But I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my birthday. So that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Happy Vedin and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Mwah.